how do we choose therapy and CML? Which this, um, it's an, you know, it's a difficult question because we have, and we have a, we have good problems. We have many therapies to choose from. We have three drugs to think about in the frontline setting. We have a total of five oral tyrosine kinase inhibitors and CML. And you know, it's really a strategy you need to take with regards to knowing the side effects of the drugs that are available, looking at each patient individually, probably making your best judge of the right fit for a patient with regards to initial therapy based on side effects and dark and response goals. Um, and I think there's clearly advantages to nilantinib and disantinib. There may be some uh, merit to think about mantinib at higher doses or um, optimized mantinib, but they're all equally um, good. And the next most important step is to navigate carefully and look at early response, change therapy when needed. And the other things we spoke about were what, it, what about second, third, fourth, fifth line treatment options? And you know, so the option list remains broad. And there, I think the disease um, may tell you what therapy is needed based on mutations or prior exposure or, or even stage. And I, I think I caution to not pass over options that may appear too risky when the disease may really warrant such a therapy, particularly with regards to pananib. Um, and I think in the next few years, we'll know a lot more about side effects and be able to manage some of the questions we have about particularly cardiovascular risk and, um, and more about um, what, what does it mean to have a deeper remission early on if there's no early survival advantage? Will patients do m more well over the long term and potentially be able to discontinue therapy if they start with more aggressive therapies?